Tonight on Hotel Hell, I'm in Oregon trying to save a family-run hotel. That's way, way out of control. The dad is a stoner hippie. I'm not a businessman. Why are you talking so I'm, much bullshit? I'm going to knock him on his ass. And the sons are at each other's throats. Grow up and turn into a real man. Fuck you. My God. And mum is drowning in debt. You owe a million on it. Yes. Can I fix a business where they spend more time getting high Smoke time. than working? It definitely yeah. smells of a business that's run by stoners. No <laughs> yeah, I know. The Applegate River Lodge is located in beautiful Applegate, Oregon. The lodge is nestled amongst gorgeous rivers, lush vineyards, and boasts some of the Northwest's most stunning views. Owners Joanna and Richard Davis built the lodge 22 years ago. Richard actually designed the, the lodge and built it. Having that much workload of stress is just unbearable. Once this labor of love was completed, Richard decided it was time to take a break and relax. For 20 years, the couple got divorced, so Richard now lives on site in a hut next to the main lodge. My given name was Richard, but at this stage of my life, I just go by Papa. The Applegate River Lodge, it's been a way of life here for my family for about 22 years. Right now, my duties are making sure that the energy that was given to me to Stuart is here on the property at all times. And yeah, it's Pop. <sighs> Let me grab my guitar. Let's see, where is my guitar? While Richard is looking for his guitar, back on Earth, his ex-wife Joanna is desperately looking for the money to keep the lodge's doors open. We could easily lose anywhere from five to $15,000 a month just because of lack of business. What's going on? Let's see, I've got any reservations coming up. What are you doing? I'm just screwing her off. I actually live in my motorhome. I rented my house out. Did you need something? No, I'm just hanging out. I don't see the Applegate River Lodge as a business. Never have, never will. All the pressure of running the lodge falls on Joanna's shoulders. She had high hopes her two sons, Duke and Dusty, would take charge of the business. I just totally fucking disagree with what you're doing. Door Should be none of your concern. There's a big window. You don't have anything to do with this goddamn restaurant. But their constant fighting has gotten in the way. My brother and I have a rocky relationship and uh, led to fist fights and all sorts of arguments. The brothers refuse to work together, so Dusty runs the restaurant and bar as a separate business. I'll, I'll grab you a menu and we can get you something else. With his girlfriend and head chef, Cammy. Way too much olive oil on him, they turned him back. While Duke and his wife, Melissa, use the hotel's lobby as a concert venue, organizing regular music nights. How's everybody feeling tonight? <laughs> Dusty's a lot more into deadlines and numbers and I'm a lot more into feelings and ideas and concepts. A lot of people say there's too much pot smoke and too much music, too much of this and too much of that, too much fun. That's not my take on it. And if that's not enough of a headache for guests trying to sleep, Richard holds after hours jam sessions. What time is it? 111. <laughs> I have had to comp some rooms here at the lodge if it was too noisy for them or they didn't think the room was clean enough. Ew! There's spider webs all feet. over it. Ugh. Ugh. So gross. I've had to cop quite a few rooms. Unsurprisingly, the inn is hemorrhaging money, dragged down by a co-owner who doesn't treat the lodge as a business and two fighting sons. If I can't get this family working together, their business is doomed. This lodge is my life. It's a legacy to carry on through generations. But the family is so dysfunctional that Gordon's just going to say, you know what, I can't fix you guys. We have to save the business. We have to save our family. I think Gordon's our only hope. My first time in Oregon, beautiful countryside. I'm on my way to the Applegate River Lodge. Now, if they've got a lodge here and they're not making a fortune, they must be doing something seriously wrong. That is beautiful. My goodness me. What's that dump? And what's that smell? 
Are you ready to go back to sleep, Troop? Ghastly. Wow. Hello? It is huge. But it's so empty. Where's all the furniture? And where is everybody? Am I too late? Wow. Press the button for the buzz to summon a human with answers. You are kidding me. Just relax. I gotta do exactly what I'm doing. Hello? It's like this place hasn't been finished off inside. Hello? 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 Where are the guests supposed to sit? Hey, hey, hello. What are you doing? How, how, <laughs> I, 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 I thought you'd gone. No, I was uh, just hanging out. Uh, sorry, I didn't catch your first name. Richard. Richard. But around here, they kind of call me Pawbutt. Pawbutt? Pawbutt. Pawbutt. We're just butlings, all of us are in around here. <laughs> Do you normally run front desk? This bell goes to my room. OK. And then when music starts coming, I turn it over. The music? The music program we're going to do tonight. Uh, so there's a music, there's a band playing tonight? Yes. And then we'll probably jam out later okay. in, in the butt hut. What, what is the butt hut? Just help me. Understand. Would you like to see the butt hut? <laughs> uh, I'd love to see the butt hut. <laughs> OK. Yeah, lovely. this is where you run the reception from, the butt hut. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This is the butt hut. This is where me and Troopy hang out. <coughs> Troopy, get up. Smell. What is that smell? Uh, incense. Them? They're right here. Incense. Yes, that is a incense. strong fucking incense. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. But that doesn't smell like the smell I've just smelled. Yeah, it's herbs. It's a medicinal herb. I love herbs, especially the freshness of them. You can use it for cooking if you want to do a really nice fettuccine. OK. Was it like uh, a this is, Yeah, it's like a basil. Wow. It has a nice smell to it. Fuck me. That's definitely not basil. Is this cannabis? Yes. So we smoke pot. Poof, that's what I could smell the minute I came in here. Yeah. What do you want me to do? Is this legal here? Yes. I use uh, medicinal herb. Before you put your hands back in that cookie jar, do you mind if I see my room? It's uh, get a bit late. Oh, oh. Uh, I'm not. I'm, not it. I'm done for a while. Oh, OK, you're done yeah, for a while. Yeah, I medicated okay. like, you know, So you... how do I get to the room? I'll show you. This is a first. The owner of this lodge is as high as a kite. Wow, look at this place. He probably hasn't even noticed the place has no furniture. This is the cattleman room. Yeah. Cattleman room, thank you. Yeah. It smells like cattle in here. Wow. What happened to the carpet? Did the dog have an accident? You know, we party a lot here, so you're going to have liquor. Who knows what's on these carpets, right? What is that? That's just bugs. Oh, bugs? Bloody hell. Yeah. Oh, and a crispy, daddy long leg. That's disgusting. And this is your view out here. No, I didn't notice the view because of the carpet. My God, what a stunning location. It's paradise. It truly is. Yeah, I'll say. I mean, this place is stunning. Shame it's so filthy, Richard. So the bedroom's up here, right? That's right. What in the hell has happened to this carpet? I haven't been up oh, there in a while. There's more stains on this carpet than inside Hugh Hefner's fucking wife rooms. Oh, yeah, I told you, they party in here. No, but Every how? I mean, how many come? Look at this carpet. Every room's got those stains on them, you know? And what about the cover on the bed? When was that from, 1970? You have talked to Joanne about that. Joanne, that's your wife? Ex-wife. Ex oh, damn. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. She right. wants to be a business. Which she should be. Uh, it's not a business to me. Don't ask me finances, because I would be lying if I told you I knew anything. I don't. Let's catch up later. I'm going to pack uh, yeah. my bags. OK, OK. Cool. Uh, thanks for the update. This place is disgusting. Wow. And it's hardly surprising seeing that the owner doesn't see it as a business. I need some fresh air. Thank he me. clearly doesn't care about paying guests. Kids, don't do drugs. You'll end up like that. Fucking useless. I've just arrived at Oregon's Applegate River Lodge. Hello? The hotel lobby has no furniture. It is so bare in here. The rooms are disgusting. It's like a basil. And I've discovered one of the owners is a carefree hippie. This is not a business to me. Richard says his ex-wife is the businesswoman here. I hope she has a better head on her shoulders. Hello? Joanna. Joanna, go on. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. 
So, you're Joanna, who was married to Richard. Yes. Uh, you deserve a medal. <laughs> um, and what do you do? Well, let's see. I check people in. I do the banking. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm the only one in the family that's ever, you know, taken care of the books and made sure that the mortgage payment was paid. And... Why is it all on your shoulders? You just sound like the only one who's actually in control I of this. I am the only one. Does, does I Richard have always a... been the one. No, he's never even looked at the checkbook. I'm really tired. I'm getting tired of holding everything up, and it's getting old. Driving through here, those vineyards, the mountains, I mean, yeah. you must be making a fortune. Uh, well, you know, I'm, well, I owe 990000 on this, and we lose from five to $15,000 a month. This is crazy. Yeah. But how can the business not be in profit? Uh, that's my, I, I don't I, know. That I, I don't understand. No, it, that's, that's what I need you for, I honestly. Having seen the lobby and my bedroom, Yeah. I can see why the hotel might be struggling, but surely the restaurant must be making money. With that view on the river like that? Well, the restaurant is run by Dusty, my younger son. Okay. And then Duke and his wife run the music end of the business. Okay. What percentage of the profits do you get? None. Bloody hell. It sounds nuts. I know it sounds nuts. I'm just crazy. Wow. I mean, look at this place. It's like a missed opportunity beyond belief. I mean, yeah. I... That's what everybody tells me. Everybody says, you've got a gold mine here. And I go, well, so far I haven't found the gold. <laughs> this place is a patch of heaven. So I'm shocked to hear it's not making money. I can't wait to hear why Joanna's sons aren't contributing to the lodge's finances. Nice to see you. First name is? Thank you. Melissa. Melissa, Gordon, yeah. nice to see you too. Well, hello, Pleasure. how are you? Likewise, my pleasure, good yeah, to see you. Much. Duke, right? Duke, yeah. So this is set up for the concert? Yeah, I run the sound. Okay, mixing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. And how much is it to get in? It's 15. $15. $15, yeah. So out of that $15 charge, how much goes to mum? None. None. Wow. Well, let's, uh, let's... let's have a quick word outside. The place has got a million dollars debt. Yeah, I know, and it's and, and and I've been sitting waiting, and I I can I can relate. I think I know what's going on here. When was the last time I had a smoke? Way earlier this after the twenty minutes ago. No, no, no. This morning. This morning. But definitely it, relieves stress. But it definitely okay. smells of a business that's run by stoners. <laughs> yeah, I know. Duke isn't taking any responsibility for the lodge. <laughs> Hopefully, his brother will have a better excuse for not sharing any profits with his mum. Gordon wants to meet you. Hello. Hello. Dusty. David. Dusty. Uh, lucky Dusty, by the sounds of things. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, I would say. Hello. Hi, Camelia. Uh, Camelia, nice. Uh, to the Hi. chef, right? Yes. OK, great. I'm a very hard worker. I think Gordon's going to like me. Uh, so, are you making money here? Yes, sir. How much money do you make a month? Uh, last month, I made about 12000 Wow. So you make about 150 grand a year? Uh, with everything working right, yeah. And you don't pay a dollar profit to your mother? Profit, excuse me? The business is a million dollars in debt. You make a shitload of money, and your mum gets nothing. I was shocked that Dusty makes that much, and that bothers me because he should help me out financially. Known full well that you stand to inherit this business, there's still not a penny that goes in to reducing debt. And this is your mother. Correct. I really devoted my life to this place and to be treated like I don't care about my family and don't care about this business, it really cut to the core. And I have no problem telling him to get the fuck out of here. I'd give you a kick with the ass if that was my son. I don't understand why the boys are just in it for themselves. Why can't the business work as one and everybody pull together? Well, you haven't done a damn thing around here. I work hard here, and I don't see you do fucking thing. Because you can't take any criticism without wanting to punch my fucking lights out. Incredible. Guys, How do you feel about this? Shut the fuck up, both of it's you. It's him. He hates me. Listen. listen what listen. would you like me to do? What would I want to see you grow up and turn into a real man. I want to see you... Oh, like have, you're a fucking real I wanna man. I want to see you be able to go and what, call, what, have what, a big shit Oh, my God. No wonder this place is on its knees. Fuck you. I'm at Oregon's Applegate Lodge, and I thought the answer for saving this place was for everyone to work together. You can't take any criticism without wanting to punch my fucking lights out. But the boys can't even talk to each other. Yeah. This guy tells me he Listen won't even be my fucking brother Listen unless I move It's out. clearly not just the lodge that's falling apart. Fuck you. My God. 
People have heard about my visit, and both the hotel and restaurant are booked for the night. And right this way, guys. I feel sorry for all of them. Hi there. Come on over here. I'll check you in. How are you folks doing tonight? Okay. And I'm sorry about the furniture in the lobby. They haven't got any. <laughs> Please take a seat on the stairs. The guests don't look impressed with the hotel, and neither do the customers in the restaurant. But at least they've got furniture to sit on. Bruschetta here, guys. Oh, shit. That's right. Bruschetta here for you guys. Oh, man. OK, fire up. You got your tri-tip. I'm not looking forward to going to the dinner service with Gordon. Um, the interaction I had with him beforehand, I just know it's going to be a nightmare. Are we OK with it? The soup was pretty cold and it didn't have any salt. And then it's, it's, no, it's lumpy. just water and potatoes. My apologies. Potatoes here. That is firing off, guys. And we got cream torch radish coming right out, guys. The uh, dog at the table, is that normal there? The dog, does he sit there like that in front of customers? Yes, sir. Some request them to stay. Some call him over. Yes. Some customers call the dog over. Oh, yes, of course. The food's that bad. While I'm trying to figure out what's wrong in the restaurant, guests in the hotel are enjoying the unique charm of the Applegate Lodge. Ooh. You're the goober of some kind here. <laughs> you don't know, look at this. You got your dry cleaner hangers? I just don't know about the bear, though. I mean, that's kind of. Oh, my gosh. Where's the TV? I hope the restaurant's better than the rooms. <laughs> Kim, I need that Thousand Island that goes with this one here. Um, we got ketchup. OK, we're adding ketchup to a ranch, and that'll be a, a thousand right here. Okay. Okay. What was, was that ketchup in the salad? Yeah. What for? For the Thousand Island. Fucking hell. I can't believe this restaurant is making money. The guests must be coming for the view, because the food is dreadful. This says grilled salmon with pepper, but it tastes like you literally just sprinkled it with sugar. The salmon is frozen. I'll, I'll be more than happy to. I'll just take that off your dinner. Certainly. I can't stand to watch another minute of this. Thank goodness dinner service is almost over, because this place is a joke. Oh, dear. Got two minutes? I'm embarrassed. I'm amazed you're still open. There's no fucking standards in here. I don't believe that there's no standards. You've got a river running outside your patio with salmon in it, and you're serving frozen salmon. Where's the standard, then? What we do here is not shit. You may be able to manipulate your mother, but you are not going to pull the wool over my eyes. Because you're playing at a restaurant that's been given to you. You haven't actually worked for this, have you? You grew up here, so, hey, Mum, I want to be a restaurateur this week. Without your mother in this lodge, you're fucked. It's nearly 10 o'clock, when many hotel guests will be thinking of heading to bed. But the music concert is just about to start. We've been doing this for 20 years, we've been playing music. I think Gordon's going to like it. I don't do drugs, so I never thought I'd see a dancing mushroom, but I was wrong. I recognize the smell. It's like the summer of love. These people are weird, but they sure are friendly. Nice to see you, Nina. I love you too. Is this a dream? Is this really happening? Sorry, are you checking in? I am so sorry. Welcome to the fucking madhouse. Your room is uh, up these log stairs right behind you here. It's insane how guests are trying to check in over this racket. If I had arrived to this, I would have gotten on the first plane back home. I don't think I'll be able to relax here. I can't really escape the sound. Wow. And the longer the music goes on, the more guests complain. I can't hear anything. You guys want to come back here? You know what? It's on me tonight, OK? We're going to make you happy no matter what. OK? All right. With Joanna giving away okay. rooms for free, the lodge is losing money, pushing this hotel further into debt. Hey, thank you guys so much for being a part of this. Have at it one more time for Polyrhythmics. It's way past midnight. And with the band finally wrapping up, it's time for me to get some sleep. Before I dive under those covers, I'm dying to see what's on top of them. That is disgusting. I am not putting my head on that pillow. 
Ah, oh, I just touched that. It's like a mosaic of semen. Look at that. Oh, disgusting. Oh, look at the lampshade. Look at that. How can they charge money for people to sleep in this filth? Wow. This is definitely a night for my sleeping bag. Right, lights out. Oh, come on. It's like trying to sleep above a nightclub. Right? Follow him, follow him, he's gone. Holy fuck, I'm going to jump out the window. This is crazy. Oh, for God's sake. It's my first night at Oregon's Applegate Lodge, and there's no way I can sleep over this dreadful noise. I've had enough. Hey, Gordon. I'll be here. Yeah, no, I'm trying to get the sleep over there. We got two seconds? Yeah. Jeff, thank you. This is insane. Oh, my God. Thank you. Um, how on earth is anyone supposed to sleep with that racket? Can, can you get the family together? Yeah. Yeah. And can we just have a a meeting together? Holy shit! I don't know what to say. I'm 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 struggling. I've never seen anything quite as shoddy as I've experienced today, and I I I'm, I'm wondering why this place is still open. How much money did we make tonight? How much money did you make? About fifteen hundred bucks. Fifteen hundred. How much money did you make tonight? Uh, a couple hundred. A couple of hundred. About 500. But with all the noise complaints, Joanna had to comp three rooms. Isn't that right? Absolutely. You two make a profit, but your mother loses money. It does not make sense. Nobody said we were sensible people. Oh, we're just blessed people. Having a million dollars in debt is not blessed. First of all, you don't understand what you're talking about. You're talking business. Mm -hmm. You're a businessman. Where's, where's the business? I'm, I'm not a businessman, and I don't try to teach you people to be business people. It's, this is our home. No one knows the difference between a hotel and a home. And does anyone else know how much stress and pressure you're under? Um, you know, I do what I have to do to, to keep the doors open, you know? Can we just quit talking about money? Richard, why can't it be financially secure so that both we of your kids... We are financially no, secure. No, Richard, we are not. Well, you can laugh at this and laugh at that, and we just want to make everybody happy, man. Listen, it ain't an issue with me. You're refusing to look at the issue because you and your sons are taking advantage of Joanna. No, it's not an issue. So why are you talking so I'm, much bullshit? It's not bullshit. It's yes, straight it up. It's straight yeah. Everything you say to me, I'm just ignore. I'm going to knock him on his ass. But you, you think, think I care what you think about me? Richard. Why don't you go have your yeah. cigarette? I'll go have my cigarette and yeah. relax a little bit, yeah. and we'll come back and then discuss this. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not going to argue with your father. I'm just going to call it as I see it. This lodge needs to be run by a business. And when I listen to your mum stressing out about payments and you two going off running your own little businesses because you two are button heads, it's a fucking disgrace. This shit has to stop. Because right now, this lady's suffering. Yet your heads are so far in the fucking sand that no one can actually see the damage you're causing. My worst nightmare is that Duke and Dusty never can get on the right page, and, and I'm stuck till I'm 90 years old trying to run this place, and then I die, and it's gone. I'm not a miracle worker. If you want this place to survive, you need to come together as a family and run this place as a proper family business. It is way past everybody's bedtime. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. This place is insane. I mean, I've never seen such a badly run lodge in all my life, and the one person I feel sorry for is Joanna. Everybody else, they think it's a big joke. Well, I tell you what, I'm not fucking laughing. Oh, God. We 
with all the partying going on at this lodge, I hardly got a wink of sleep. I don't want to stand on that carpet. This lodge is in a dreadful state, and I think everyone's blind to it. That has to change. Morning. You okay, my darling? Yeah. Uh, there's something I want you to understand because I think you're the only one who can actually appreciate yep. some things that's been going on here. Yeah? Yeah. Will you come up with me? What he might be showing me next, I don't know how much <laughs> worse it could get. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for coming. This is Joanna. She is the owner. Um, these are esteemed guests that have been staying in your lodge. I need to hear the truth and so does Joanna. Let's start off with you, madam, please. Um, me and my boyfriend stayed here a few days ago. Both of us weren't really pleased. We were all the way in the Myrtle Suite, so we were the closest to the bar, and we could hear it like we were next to it. Uh, my apologies. Uh, I'm sorry. Please, madam, sir. We got the honeymoon suite, and the bathroom wasn't clean, so we, you know, I cleaned it, and it just kind of grossed us out. The fact you had to clean the room before you tried to relax, it's insane. <sighs> madam, please. We got into bed and felt something. I pulled it up with my foot, and it was a pair of underwear, dirty underwear. Oh, my God. As she... I'm mortified. That is completely unacceptable. Did you have any interactions with Richard? Richard invited us to the back room. What, in the, like, the butt hut? Yes. To do what? There was He's marijuana done. in the back. He offered, which we did not partake. Taking guests into the butt room and off them it's marijuana. It. It's not a hippie commune, it's a, it's a lodge. I know. I thank you for your time. The guest's feedback has hit Joanna hard, and now she's asked to speak to me alone. Morning. You OK, my darling? Oh, I wanted to show you this book. It's the building of the lodge and kind of see what we went through. Oh, wow. The from the beginning? From the beginning, yeah. Wow. We built it with our hands. We felled the trees, we hand-peeled the poles, we, we did it all. And it's, it's an amazing story how we pulled this together. I think if you understand the struggle that we went through to get it to this place, you understand why I'm so fired up about yeah. keeping it and, and having it run wow. top-notch. And this is, this is sort of ground zero, this is where yep, it all started. Yep, it's ground zero, yeah. That's, that's the butt head, actually. Seriously, yeah. that's incredible. And the kids, you know, they were all here. We grew up here. They're, they're, they're attached to it. It means so much to them. Now I understand. I mean, it's clearly your, your little paradise, but I don't think it's been paradise for guests. But that's all going to change. Yep. Wow, look at that. <laughs> and they lived happily ever after. That was my dream. And I think that could still happen. It is going to happen. Please. Uh, Let's go and do this. OK. okay. You back. I'll see you shortly. OK. Thank you for that. Sure. Now I can see why Joanna loves this lodge so much. And I know that to save this place, I need to get her sons talking again. Clearly their dad's not gonna make that happen. <coughs> He's too busy doing nothing. Come in a minute. So, I've got to find a way to get these brothers on the same page. So, can you guys get this thing settled once and for all? I can't talk to him, though, and have him not want to punch me, okay? I've been being bullied my whole life, Gordon. What are you talking about? You, you, you really think that you haven't done anything no, no. to what, what have I... Tell me. Tell me what I've done. Tell me what and I've I... said to you that hurts you so bad, because you've said so many things to me. You've resented me. You've told me I'm a punk. You said I'm a white trash tweaker. You're living like one. I'm ashamed that you're my brother. That's a serious statement. Shit. Come on. This is horrifying. You know, go ahead. Just leave. No. Get the fuck off this property. Did you guys get along ever? Was there ever a time? Yet. This is horrifying. No, go ahead. Just leave. No. Did you guys get along ever? Get the fuck off this Was property. Was there ever a time? When is somebody going to say, fuck it, this isn't about my big brother, my little brother, this is about my mum? The hatred has to stop. I agree. The hatred has to stop. Yeah. If we don't figure this out, we're going to lose the lodge. I don't want that at all. I, Dusty, why have we let this go on for so long? And I love you, and I, and I don't want to see you hurt ever. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's been such a long road with Duke that, you know, I've just been, been praying every day for something to change because it, it taxes my mother so much. I am so relieved to hear that from both of you. You okay? Yeah. Now that Duke and Dusty have seen the pain they've caused their mother, I believe they're going to be willing to put their issues aside to save this piece of paradise. This lodge has so much potential in this beautiful setting. It's somewhere I'd love to bring my wife and four kids for a vacation. It would be a tragedy if Joanna and her family lost it. Wow, what an absolutely beautiful place to go for a swim. But there's still one problem I need to tackle to make sure this lodge has a future it deserves. It's time to talk business. Take a seat. Um, Richard, there's a business meeting. OK. You're not really involved running the business. Right. right. OK? And I think you need to let these guys deal with the business. Yeah. So I would ask you to disappear. Okay. You're a nice guy. Yeah. You're not going to change. And do you know what? I don't think your family want you to change. I know. They love you. Yes. As you are. Yes. OK, so I want you to have a, a relaxed afternoon. Cool. Thank you. That's why you're here. Well, I appreciate I've it. I've been talking years. You take care. <laughs> OK. Uh, OK, see you, Dad. Thank you. Yeah. Richard. Right now, it's not your time, young man, and it's not your time. Do you know whose time it is? That's right. That's right. And she's at the helm. But she can't do it without you. That's right. All the personal shit you leave when you walk through that door because it's about business now. Yeah, we've never had that. You have the possibility of turning this around. Joanna, what have you got to say? I just really need you guys both. You know, I tried for many years to do this on my own, but you know what? It's time maybe you guys help out a little more. Let's get this thing going, man. Let's roll. You realize how freaking lucky we are to have this place? Boys, are both of you committed to working together and getting this place turned around. Yeah. No am in if you're in it. Absolutely, man. As, as businessmen and then brothers. Yep. Once we figure this out, <laughs> we'll work the other shit out. But we got to be here for mom, OK? OK. All right. Love you. And... Big time. It just warms my heart to watch the boys embrace and, and to, to see that they really want to, to work together and to help grow this place again. <laughs> It feels like a weight's been lifted off my shoulders right now, and, and now that we're actually on some sort of a, a page together, I think we can we can really start going somewhere with it. I am just like stoked. <laughs> These are tears of joy, not sorrow. Thank God. There's a lot more changes coming tomorrow. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you. I thought Gordon was coming here to fix the, the lodge, but he ended up fixing our family, which is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you later. OK. Coming up, welcome to the new Applegate River Lodge. I can't believe it. <laughs> welcome to the new Applegate River Lodge. From this day forward, we will run this as one business. Yes, there's a restaurant. Yes, it's a music venue. But they are all part of the lodge business and they contribute to the overall lodge finances. Understood? Understood. Good. I cannot wait for you to see through those doors. You ready? Yeah. Absolutely. Let's go. Whoa. Oh, my god. Oh, my gosh. Wow. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> wow. Holy smokes. Wow. Woo. This looks like a lodge. Wow. <laughs> oh, my god. <laughs> When I first got here, I had to sit on the floor. Oh, so now your guests will feel warm and very welcomed. Yes, absolutely. Wow. The lobby actually feels like a lobby now. The leather couch is incredible and the rocking chairs. I mean, people can come down in the morning, have a cup of coffee, they can sit down. It's amazing. Is it gorgeous? It's beautiful, yeah. I love it. Come over to the reception desk. There's something else I want to show you. Here is the magic. Yeah. I have yeah. given you a stunning brand new hotel management POS, point oh, of sale yeah. system. Wow. So now your guests can check in online. Wow. It works in here, it works in the restaurants, and it's going to tap in to your music as well. Perfect. Perfect. I love it. 
that system. It's gonna really change everything we do here. Gordon has just, he's synced everything up and made this one business. It's really what this place has needed for so long. Now, would you like to see my room? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's go. There we go. Go straight through. Oh. Oh, cute. Look at this. Wonderful. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, nice. Wow. Oh, it smells so good in here, too. I love wow. it. Wow. So the room is fresh, it's vibrant, it's warm, and I've had all the carpets cleaned, so there are no more stains. Ooh, nice. I oh. it. My curtains are gone, my 16-year-old oh. curtains. <laughs> oh, it's nice. Is it beautiful? Wow. Way nice. The disgusting bedware, all gone. And with the blinds, guests no longer need to stare down at Richard's butthole. Butthole, this is that. The cabin room looks like a really classy place now. I mean, the bed, the, the furnishings, the lamps, it's, it's not all that funky stuff I had in there for years. <laughs> oh, I love it. Stunning. One last thing I'd like to show you at the restaurant. Are you ready? Yep. yep. Let's go. We've got some exciting things happening there. Holy moly. Welcome to the new Applegate River Lodge a menu. The menu's small, the menu's dynamic, and the better the ingredients, the less that needs doing to them. Let's start off with the top, shall we? Half a roasted chicken and a lovely sage lemon butter sauce. Next to that, the wild king salmon with citronelle and grilled lemon. And then finally, 12 ounce New York strip. Stunning. I like it. It's simple, but it's, it's yep. perfect. Now, sit down and enjoy. Oh, my God. It's steak. Oh, yeah. Wow. You can just taste the freshness. It's really good. It's a night and day. I love this menu because it's us. Have we ever had dinner all together? It really hasn't happened. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up, Richard, you will not believe what I've done with your butt hut. Oh, oh my shit. God. With the Davis family ready to work together, and the stunning new changes to the lodge, I've got one more surprise for the family that will take this hotel to a whole new level. This one you're gonna love. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. <laughs> wow. Now, this is everything you need to put on a mini music festival for your guests. Oh, wonderful. Hell, I can't believe it. <laughs> now, here's the exciting news. All of a sudden, <laughs> the lodge has four extra bedrooms. No way. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Whoa. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> yeah, that's too good. Wow. Mm -hmm. Coupled with a new outdoor grill so the guests can enjoy nice. a phenomenal barbecue lunch while they enjoy the show. Now, the music business, the lodge, the restaurant will work together. And all the elements of the business will be making money to help pay down the debt and keep this place open for decades to come. I'm completely excited and ready to start doing music outdoors. And I think it's really going to be a great way for the lodge and the restaurant and the music to unite. Wow. Perfect. Now, Richard, you will not believe what I've done with your butt hut. You ready? Oh, come and see. God. Come and see. I'm only joking. I haven't touched that thing about. Oh, I was. Shit. You don't want to go in there. <laughs> It's time for the new and improved Applegate Lodge to open to the public. Four yeah. course later, yes. While Dusty and Cammy deal with the meals, Duke and Melissa handle the entertainment. With their combined effort, much needed revenue is coming into the lodge. And with the music on the outdoor stage, the entertainment is far enough away for guests to enjoy their rooms. Quiet. Feels like we're away from everything. Now that the relaunch is a success, I've got to hit the road. Gordon. It's time for you to say goodbye. It's been a slice of heaven. A little slice of heaven. <laughs> Serious? Yeah. But please do not offer any more guests some of those special herbs. Already. You built this place. Right. Now let them have it. Or gladly. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Okay. It's been an absolute pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs> Boys, my time is done. Look after each other. Okay. And forget the past. Work with your brother and take some weight off your mother's shoulders. Yeah? yeah. And this place is going to roll. Thank you so okay. much, Gordon. If Gordon didn't come, we'd, we'd be in the same stagnant environment with uh, no love and a lot of anger. Those boys need to know who's boss. They will. Uh, good luck. Thank you so okay. much. There's just no words that can express how grateful I feel for this awesome, amazing experience. Good night, darling. Bye-bye. Are they sad to leave this place? But I will not be sorry to see the back of Richard's butthole. 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 <laughs>
<laughs> Since my visit to the Applegate River Lodge, Dusty and Duke continue to get along, and they're helping Joanna get income for the lodge to reduce their debt. If you want to get all the trash, I'll get all the dishes. Uh, OK. This family-run hotel is finally running smoothly. I feel like this is the first step to taking the lodge into a destination resort, which is what it needs to be. We should spend more time together as a family, you know? Yeah. Gordon has given us a, an opportunity of a lifetime, and we're not going to let him down. I want to thank Gordon for having the love in his heart to come here and put my family back together. That's what I want. Love you. Love you, too. I'm in Florida to help a struggling hotel on the beach. A young owner at the helm who has no control over his staff. What is that? Oh, boy. Why it's like that, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm faced with many challenging situations. It stinks in here. This is filthy. Really bad. And I'm unsure if I can turn this place around. Your chef has shut down. I can't work like this. I want to go now. I want to get the fuck out of here. Midway between Orlando and Miami, on Florida's Atlantic coast, lies the small town of Fort Pierce, home to the beachfront inn and inlet. Owner Brian Paul opened it in 2012 after running his family's successful local fish market with his brother. My job before the inlet was the, the CEO, the head of my dad's fish market. My dad ran a business like a, uh, a real leader. He had so many friends pillar of the community. Everybody loved him, and uh, I always knew as a child I wanted to have my own place. I think Brian has a lot of schooling under his belt. I'm not exactly sure that he has any hotel experience. Brian, as an owner, is physically here sometimes. He's just, like, kind of wanders around. Brian is a little too easygoing. If it was me, I'd have my hands, nose, eyes, and ears in everything, and I don't see him doing that. Brian definitely has a lot of friends that work here, uh, some of which have taken advantage of him in the past. Um, I believe that Chef Ben probably has taken most advantage of him. I want a beer. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're having a tasty beer tonight, boys. Yeah! Ben is a, uh, an awesome guy. I've known him forever. We've been friends forever. I give him plenty of space. I help him whatever he needs. But I don't muddle in his affairs down there. I think that the issue here has been our lack of consistency with our food. And, and I mean, that directly has to be attributed to the executive chef. You know, his name is Ben. I feel like the inlet and the beachfront both lack direction. We're trying to be too many things at once. A nightclub, a bar, a restaurant, a hotel, a wedding venue, a concert venue, a place to do your Christmas party at. I mean, ah. The military secret. We have some guests and employees hooting and hollering until the wee hours of the morning. And that's out of control. That's got to stop. It's bad for business. Brian has to refund hotel guests money because of the noise complaints. I think this place has so much potential and so much to offer. We don't want to see it fail. We don't want to see Brian fail. He definitely needs to step up and help us all out to help him. He needs to grab those reins and start, start seeing the damage that's happening and uh, start fixing it. Today, I'm in the beautiful coastal town of Fort Pierce, Florida. Just looking around, you're surrounded by stunning beaches, marinas full of deep sea fishing boats. This place is gorgeous. Look at this place. It looks like the hotel's closed down. Hello. Anybody in? Welcome. Thank How you. How are you? I'm very well indeed, thank you. First name is? Liza. Good Liza. to meet you. Liza, good to see you. How are you doing today? Who's is this? 
The boss man caught it. And where's the other half gone? <laughs> Maybe they ate it. Belt, I don't know. Belt, pair of shoes. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. It is a what little weird. What do you weird. use it for? I don't use it for anything, actually. Wow. And what's that up there? That was here when I got here, believe it or not. That's for sale? Apparently so, yes. So he went onto the beach, picked uh -huh. up some driftwood, and then mm -hmm. dipped it in some varnish. Yep. Oof. <laughs> $22. Uh-huh. Stop. Same as that one over there. No. <laughs> Insane, no? <laughs> Have you sold any of these? No. Never? No. <laughs> Seriously. And how much for the T-shirts? Between $12 for employees and $18 for guests. So staff have to pay for their own T-shirts? Yes. And for the guests, they're $18? Yes. Wow. So when was the last time you sold a T-shirt? I sell them every day, but mostly to um, the employees. The employees. <laughs> yes. How long have you been here? The establishment's been here almost three years. I've been wow. here almost three years as well. What's wrong with it, from your um, point of view? Noise levels, you know, especially the one directly above the restaurant. That What kind of noise? Because it's not the... The music and the people, the foot traffic, everybody wow. hanging out at the bar and things wow. of that nature. So that restaurant. goes on directly underneath? Yes. Mm -hmm. They end up being refunded, and then they end up putting us on blast on all of these, you know, websites and social media and just bad reviews left and right. Mm. Housekeeping, come back. What's that for? Touch base with yes, the housekeepers. Wow, have a good word. Um, just out of interest, uh, it's Gordon here, I've just checked in. How far away are the fucking rooms? I mean, you sound like you're miles away. Hello, madam? <laughs> you scared her. So room 16. Yes, um, And sir. where is it, please, darling? I'm gonna direct you, right this way. What's that thing there? We grill our wings on it. You grill your wings on it? Yes. How often do you grill wings in there? Every stinking day. Wow. Jesus. In fact, I think there's a wing left in there. <laughs> when was that grilled? Chances are it could have been yesterday. Those are the extra crispy ones. <laughs> and who's responsible for this? The kitchen handles all of this end of it, of course. You found another charbroiled. And these were done yesterday? I believe so. And they cook every day on here? Yes. And are the customers still alive? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> right, room 16. Yes, Let's go. sir. This is your Caribbean building. The Caribbean. Caribbean, Caribbean, yes. Um, uh huh. What These part the... of this resembles the Caribbean? I think it's more so because of the view. Oh, the view. Right here, sir. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Whew. Wow. It stinks in here. There's a very sort of damp, musty smell. Bloody hell. Oh, the bed feels like it's 15 years old. Oh, it smells. Curtains are terrible. Oof. The place is filthy. Really bad. Absolutely disgusting. $180 a night for this shit all. Oof. Wow, mini bar. Consisting of absolutely fuck all. Freezer, over frozen and defrosted about 10 years ago. What a mess. I know when I'm coming to fix a business, they have various issues. But right now, with the information I have, I am not impressed with how Brian, as an owner, is operating this hotel. Hello. Hello, welcome to the inlet. So you must be Brian. I am, sir. The hotelier and the 34-year-old. I do it all. You do it all. Is that what you are, seriously, 34? Right. You know what? I'm 33. I work so hard, I think I just thought I was 34. You're 33. <laughs> me. Um, did you call this building the Caribbean? Yes. Have you ever been to the Caribbean? Yeah. Which part? Uh, the Bahamas. And this has been modelled on the Bahamas. Correct. Do you smoke when you're in the Bahamas? You know, like that. I've tried a couple times, surely. Okay. Stop. Yeah, yeah. No, what hotel in the Caribbean or the Bahamas were you running before you bought this one? So I've just visited the Caribbean. I've never ran a hotel in the Caribbean. So you just go buy yourself a 25-bedroom hotel on the beach with a bar and... All I know how to do is run a fish market when I open this, and I've fish built market. it from the scratch, from the ground up. So the fish is fresh, obviously from the market. They're so fresh. Right. I better jump in. Can I show you to your table? Uh, yes, why not? Yeah. <laughs> table for you right here. Excellent, thank you. May I? Uh, please. I'm excited for the fresh fish. 
It's so surreal, bro. Gordon Ramsay's in the dining room. What's with the name tags? I mean, you're the owner, right? I think I should lead by example, so I, I, I like to wear mine. That way, if I tell them that they need to wear them, then they can't say, well, Brian, you don't wear yours. Right. I'm starving. I'm going to get you some food I'm right away. I'm going to get you a great server. OK, great. How are you? How are you? Doing? Nice Good. to see you. Good. My name is Kelly. Kelly, how long have you been here? Um, I've been here about a year. Nice. Mm -hmm. And um, why do the staff have to buy their T-shirts? Um, I don't. I was never told. Even our first shirts, our name tags. You buy your name tag as well. Yeah. We have to pay like eight dollars. Never and seen then, that before. <laughs> eight dollars a name tag. Twelve dollars a T-shirt. That's twenty dollars before we come to fucking work. Wow. Mm -hmm. As I look at the menu, I notice it's absolutely massive. So, I decided to order the chicken wings, which honestly, I wasn't surprised when they were dry. Then I had the lobster mac and cheese, which technically isn't mac and cheese because they use penne pasta. But the worst part of my lunch was the tuna burger, which I knew wasn't quite right. Is that fresh? It is frozen. Oh, it's frozen? Yes. Hold on, you said fish market, fresh fish daily. Frozen fish, fresh fish, what's going on? We use frozen sometimes, sure. And you have a fish market that you buy from? Yeah, yep, yeah. Um, I'm confused. Ever since about four months ago, everything was fresh, everything. I ran up a little bit of a bill with my brother. So we cut back and started ordering some of the frozen stuff from some of the purveyors. And what's the feedback? We get some negative feedback. He hasn't had one nice thing to say. I know, it's a blow to the ego, but you knew it was going to be something. I think it was going to be everything. Um, explain this monstrosity. What in the fuck is going on here? This is our kiosk. Kiosk. An effort to have products for right. all sorts of people. So beach volleyballs, towels, volleyballs, uh, uh, bean bags, shirts, sick bags. How, how busy is this? How was it going? I honestly, uh, it doesn't do that good. How many beach towels have you sold? Not too many beach towels. Right. Show me one. All right, we'll back. Uh, I'd love to see one, please. What a fucking disaster. We're on the beach and we don't have towels. What is wrong with this picture? How was lunch? OK. OK is not good enough. Ah, I thought we lost you. Thank you very much. Whenever you're ready to go to the beach. Whenever I'm ready to go to the beach. Wow. How many do you have in stock? One. Uh, <laughs> you got it. Oh. That's the one. OK, can you charge that to my room, please? Yes, I will. So we're sold out now? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. At lunch, I was very disappointed that Brian falsely advertises fresh fish on his menu. I want to learn more about how involved he is as an owner during an evening at the beachfront. Checking in, Susan Addison. Can I go ahead and start you off with something to drink? OK. <laughs> Smoke them if you got them. OK, Ben. Hey, Chef. Uh, just give, give us a little quick run through how the uh, line works. Well, normally I run the pass and right. expo. Chef, I'll take care of this. Boom, boom, boom. Use the pass for the saute guy and then the fry guy. Working with Ben, I can't really tell you what he does. Where's Brian? Don't know, Chef. And Brian would just avoid him instead of trying to get to the root of the problem. And I think that in itself is a problem. How long have you been here? Uh, since last December. Oh, wow. So you've been here a long time? Yeah. In your mind, what do you think the major problems are? Lack of consistency, lack of, yeah. as a matter of fact, and lack of yeah. structure. Yeah, I saw that lunchtime. Yeah. I found out about the fish not being so fresh. How so, can you not sell fresh fish when you're on the beach? That's our motto, fresh fish. So how many of them do you think understand that we're selling frozen fish? They probably don't. No. Because I don't think the servers are telling no. them. <laughs> Meanwhile, the customers disappear. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Great update. Thank you. thank you. Brian, how many of these customers in tonight know that you're serving frozen food? You know, they don't really know how the uh, the market works, so probably none of them. They don't know how the market works. They, they, they don't understand. Sorry, that. How are you? Hey, how are you? Do you think we're going to be serving frozen food tonight or fresh fish? Fresh. 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 Why fresh? Well, we're on the beach. Well, why don't you explain to them tonight that you changed things four months ago and we're not serving fresh fish anymore, we're serving frozen? Man up. 
So uh, just a few months ago, we switched from some of our fresh products to some of frozen seafood products. But why would you do that? They're quality products. They just aren't the best the quality that you would expect from you know the Pelican seafood market. They're quality frozen products. Yeah, it's it's a cost thing. So when I come out to somewhere like this, for being on the beach, of course, I would hope to have yeah. fresh fish. Where is this fucking freezer? It's around here. Uh, right down here, Gordon. Let's have a look. So this is the frozen bit here. What's that? Frozen avocado. Are we not in Florida? And you can't make fresh avocado? Dude, this is fucked. Where's the freezer? Excuse me. Main walk-in. Wow, wow, wow. When was the last time you were in here? I come in here once a week at least, and I once a kinda, week. you know, just kind of look around or whatever. What is this? Wow. Oh, man. Look at that. The water's gone slimy. And you come in here once a week? Yeah. What is that? Oh, boy. Fucking hell. What is that? Pina colada. Pina colada. Why it's like that, I have no idea. It's festered. It's, it's, it's off. It's bubbling. Oh, man. That's terrible. Fuck. Trash, please. <coughs> trash. <coughs> James, trash, please, now. Pina colada. Right down the drain. By the bucket load in the walk-in fridge. I mean, who in the hell operates like this? Gordon, this is Chef Ben's job. He's the executive chef. He's the executive chef. And you made him that executive chef, right? Sure I did. How'd you feel now? What's that? Tuna burger. That's from the burger? Yes, it is. Oh, my god. Seriously? Bacon. It's gone. It's, it's, it's off. Fresh produce on top of old produce. Moldy. And this one? Ribeye. Ribeye defrosting. Yeah. What is this? Those are the smoke grilled chicken wings before they go onto the char grill. Oh, my god. And what is in this one? You are kidding me. So underneath in that bucket is what? Cooked product. Cooked chicken. Mm -hmm. And on top of it is what? It's raw. Raw chicken on top of cooked chicken. I had them for lunch. I am at a fucking loss. Do you know the best way out of this is just to shut the place down? Not an option for me. What's that in there, Ben? Those are marinated chicken wings. Yeah. To be smoked. Underneath, next box. Those are smoked. Rule number fucking one. Ben. I know. Chef, I didn't do it. You know, I turn my back for a minute, and this is the kind of shit that happens. I walked in, and it was bedlam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's telling me this is your fault. You've got no idea. I am at an absolute fucking loss. I can't work like this. This is huge. You now are running a restaurant cross-contaminated. Joey. Yes, Chef. Who's responsible for this? Um, we all are. The, the, the entire kitchen is, yeah. Rule number one, you can't put hot food in a fucking walk-in. It doesn't even go together. No, not at all. Nowhere near each other's. I guarantee you when it was put in there after I marinated it, they weren't shuffled. I can give you 12 more issues in there that are bad. I mean, you are heading for a fucking massive disaster. I, I mean, who the hell put them on top of the, the other ones? Everybody in here Brian, knows if better. I, if I Haven't knew, you trained I... everybody to know that? Yeah. I mean... All I'm getting right now is excuses. The kitchen needs direction from the chef, the staff need direction from the owner, and your buddies. Can someone come up with a fucking solution? I'm gonna go in 86 the wings. Sort it out quickly. Come on, guys. 86 wings. Someone put raw fucking chicken wings on top of cooking. It wasn't me, somebody else did it. 86 wings is the only thing I can do right now. What in the fuck is going on? I was baffled and amazed. The words out of Ben's mouth were, oh, I clean that cooler regularly every day. You want me to go in there and pull everything out, clean it? That is not your job to wipe the ass of an executive chef. I, I know that. There were weeks you wouldn't show up, but maybe three days a week. 
Why didn't Brian step up? Brian, he may be oblivious to some of this stuff. They've known each other since they were young guys, or, you know. This is crazy. Team. So Ben goes AWOL, Brian does nothing about it, the place starts falling apart, and then he just steps back in when he wants. Pretty much, pretty much. But if this was your business, you wouldn't tolerate that. Yeah, I would have fired Ben a long time ago. I was, I was all for firing Ben two months ago, so, I mean. Uh... No excuse for that walk-in like that, so. I'm sorry, I, I just couldn't hold back anymore. He doesn't come, he doesn't come to work. That's the reason why it looks like that, okay? That is absolutely the reason why. If he's here by 12 and he leaves by five, we're lucky. I'm just, I'm not James is telling me the truth. I'm, 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 I'm here to tell you the truth. You're not telling me the I truth. I promise you I'm gonna tell you the truth. The only way to really, truly identify a chef before you even taste his food is to open up his walk-in. That speaks volumes for any chef. He's a chef that's given up and going through the motions. Sometimes I feel that way. We've been through a lot. I know he's got a lot on his plate. He's incompetent, and he's taking your fucking business down. You know, I, I don't think he's incompetent. You're fucking mad. And the sad thing is that your staff and your management and your team see it, and you're the only person that doesn't know what's going on. And this is the way you want to run your business. Yeah. Oh, you do not need my help. What's up, party people? Wow. That's loud, that music. It is loud. Oh, man. How are you doing? Yeah, I just need a little piece of quiet. Oh, um, not you a good? Problem. That's crazy, no? Yes, it is. I mean, it's like the blind leading the blind in there because there's no discipline. That yeah. I do know. Ben's checked out, Brian's never checked in, and uh, they're all blaming each other. Yeah, I do know there's no there's no discipline, there's no communication, no. there's none of it. No. What's the problem with him stepping up and dealing with issues? Maybe it has something to do with the fact that he, he's not fully um, experienced in certain no. de departments. No. Are they hosting concerts? Are they, uh, is it a frat party hangout? Is it a college? I mean, how can they call themselves a hotel? That's that's the difference. That's the part that we need to try to separate, and I've been saying it for a while. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Good evening, Beach Front Inn. Liza speaking. How can I help you? Hi, Liza. We're in room 20, and um, there's a lot of dust, and it smells like smoke, and uh, my my friend here, Gloria, is having a really bad reaction. She had to take steroids, and it's supposed to be a non-smoking room. I'll be right with you. <laughs> Brian, there's two guests have checked in upstairs. Okay. Uh, she's uh, she's got an issue with an allergy because the room stinks of smoke. It'd be nice if you just come up and see them or try and calm the situation down. So the lady's got an allergy and she's already had to take a steroid. And her eyes are streaming and she's not very happy. Okay. Hello. Hello. So are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. You sure? Any issues? Oh. Water all over the floor. <laughs> Sorry? We had water all over the floor. Water all over the floor? The what? refrigerator. There's water on the floor. <laughs> in the oh, room. no, really? Yeah. I just cleaned it up with a okay. towel, yeah. You still I, see I, something. I'm sorry. Damn. I walked in, it, it, was, it was completely all the way to the bed. Wow. Let's, uh, let's, let's come back. Let's go into, I want to see that lady. Well, the ladies, her eyes are streaming. <laughs> Do excuse oh. us. Sure. Ladies, are you decent? Sorry, I've got the owner here. Oh, really? That smell in? There's yeah. all dust inside it. Oh, shit. There you go. It's just my eyes are tearing. When was that cleaned last? That's a, uh, that's really a daily thing that, um... Daily? It should be, sure, yeah, absolutely. That is not daily. Uh... Look at that. That's why. Ooh. Jesus Christ almighty. No one of the poor ladies broken out. It's like the back of my throat is all scratchy. Is there an alternative room we can use for the ladies? I'll double check right away. Have a drink downstairs, a little bite to eat, but we can sort something out. Okay.
the big problem here is that there's no direction for the hotel, for the restaurant, for the gazebo, not even for the car park. Ben is like a headless chicken that's checked out, and Brian's like this scared school kid that is not qualified to run a fucking beach bar, let alone a hotel on a beach. So, <sighs> this is bad. This is really grim. Brian, am, am I wrong? I feel like we blew it tonight. No, oh, man, it's just, it's just what it is, you know? We don't, uh, don't worry, man. <laughs> Same. After a very frustrating night, I woke up this morning hopeful that Brian would be eager to admit his faults at the beachfront. But that wasn't the case. Even after a staff meeting, none of the problems are sinking in with Brian. So I reached out to his brother Eric, who is continuing to fund the business, and I'm hoping Brian can start to see the damage he has done. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for coming in. Why is Ramsey here? Your brother just asked you a question. Why did you call me here? I've got uh, a lot of issues that uh, I need to take care of. You don't look like a man that's in pain. You don't look like a man that's struggling. You don't look like a man that's lost control. You look like you're bouncing around, having fun. The business is hurting. You're hurting your brother's business, and you're not realizing it. It does re reach a ceiling where, where Brian, you're going to have to get cut off. I will, I'll respect it, but you gotta let me know how much time and I'll, 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 I'll make it. I'll make it. Two more months, but then that's it. Two months. Here's my promise. I will focus so hard and I will be able to pay you in eight weeks. I'll pay you in eight weeks. I'll pay you in eight weeks. 30 grand. You gotta, you, 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 you gotta give me, you gotta give me 90 days. I mean, you gotta give me 90 days. He's just given you eight weeks. You've just asked for 12 weeks. Correct. You can't continue depending on your little brother's cash to float your dreams. I just need you to make sure not to screw this one up again. I'm not gonna screw it up. I'm not convinced. I'm no, no, no. You're lucky he's your fucking brother. Eric, I got you. Eight months. Eight weeks. Eight weeks or you're cut off. That's all there is to it, man. How important is your reputation to you? That's the most important thing in my world. And on a scale of one to ten, your reputation in this town now. I gave myself a good, a good eight. A good eight. A good, good, a solid strong eight. eight. Absolutely. So these are customers that have gone out their way to spend their hard-earned cash supporting your business. You must recognise a few of these faces. Absolutely, I do. Let's start off with the lady in the blue shirt. You know her very well. Hey, play. Hi, Brian. How do you know each other? Uh, I market Brian. You're a spokesperson for that business. Yes. Can you be honest with this one? Yes, I can. The service is very bad. I've brought people here. I've been up at the bar myself trying to order even just a water. That's been tough. Do you not listen to the advice in terms of sloppy service? I, I absolutely, I, I listen, I do listen, I do listen, I do listen. Do you offload that to your team? No, I don't, I don't. So that's why it's not dealt with. Sir, your experience? We ordered a chicken sandwich. When the chicken sandwich came out, it was raw. It was raw and it was mushy in the middle. I could have got sick from that. And I love your bar because I could come here late night and I can get free drinks. Two for me and two for my buddy and pay for one, we got five. Wow. Unbelievable. Sir? My first experience here was a Super Bowl party that you advertised and uh, actually had some out of town guests. Food was very mediocre. The crab cakes were like sawdust. They were horrible that night. After the game was over, a couple of rowdy fans started a little brawl. Uh, we had drinks thrown on us. Wow. The other thing I'd like to say is, if I'm staying on the ocean, I love to fall asleep with the window open and hear the ocean. You can't do that here. You hear music all night long. I honestly stayed here myself once. I tried to call down because um, our sheets were dirty. You couldn't even call, like nobody answered. And literally, I think the biggest 
problem for me is the mixed message. It's like, are you a bar or are you a restaurant? Because they're paying $150 for dinner. However, there's people walking in in bikinis, drunk. Damn. Listen, this feedback has been crucial. Anything you'd like to say? Thank you, guys. You guys rock, man. Yeah, man thanks. Thank you. I'm telling you, make you proud, I promise All right. you. <laughs> Let's go. It's not a time for high-fiving. I'm fucking embarrassed. What the fuck are you hugging them sure. for? I know that they care. I do know they care. A raw chicken sandwich. But that's not an eight. That is not an eight out of ten. And do you think they're set up? Do you think this is a TV show and we're just going to spout off? These people aren't exaggerating. They're real. They're real customers. You're turning into a laughing stock. Yeah, no, it's not good. The jury's out with me. I've never come this far and still sat on the fence in an undecided way. But fucking listen up and listen carefully. The partying, the free-for-all, I'm paying for one drink, they're giving me five in front of your eyes. Tomorrow, you turn up here looking like an owner. Understood. You got a lot on your plate, but get your head out the fucking clouds and get real. Fuck off. I've got this, Gordon. I'll yeah. show you. Even though I wasn't won over by Brian's commitment, I went ahead and designed a new concept for the beachfront. My team and I completely overhauled the rooms and added a beach club to the unused outdoor space. I'm really hoping Brian can see the potential he has to offer. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I wish it was a good morning. What did I ask you to come into work today? What did I say? What was the one thing I said to you? Come in as a... Boss. A boss. Right now, you look like a towel boy. I mean, sunglasses around your neck, badge on there, shorts on there. Who are you? Give me the name badge. Stand out from the crowd. You're the owner. I've had a really rough night, and so has my team. Get out of here, get changed, and come back like an owner. Now, fuck off. Ready. <clears throat> Honestly. Gordon. Hurry up. No, 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 no. I'm not listening. Gordon, I'm coming back like a boss. I'm ready to make this whole Fort get... Pierce community prep. Gordon. Get out of here. Seatbelt on. No doors and no seat belt. Oh, my God. I'll, I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be ready. Brian returned looking like an owner, and I'm hoping that translates into his role as a boss. Let's go. Jerry, quick step, let's wow. go. It's time to reveal to Brian and his staff the newly renovated beachfront inn and nice. inlet. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Man. This is what I envisioned. Wow. Wow, oh, wow, wow. First of all, this is not the Love spring break it. hangout that's gone wrong. This is a proper beachfront room. Sweet. <sighs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's an inlet. Oh, my God. Whoa, the floor. I love it. It's, it's perfect. But you've got a tangible asset here that can help lift this business and, more importantly, start making money. Awesome. Brian, you need to get a grip of this business and you need to realise, you know, what's at stake here. I need to be convinced. I need to see you stepping up as a boss. Ben and Joey, we're relaunching that restaurant tonight. So. I'm going to go through with that menu, jump downstairs, get organized, and start finding your way. Let's go. Oh, oh man. After observing dinner service, I saw the beachfront kitchen wasn't set up to handle such a massive menu. So I redesigned a smaller menu that is easy for Ben to execute. OK, guys, small menu. Let's run from the top. Appetizers, lobster mac and cheese done with the correct pasta, Ben. Steamed clams, again, great sharing for the table wings off the smoker, so it stays nice and crisp. And a chicken cob salad. Entrees, pan-seared scallops. Easy, three sears, ahi tuna, fresh. And then, of course, the mahi-mahi. It's small, it's inviting. And tonight, I've just been told that we've got the mayor in for dinner. There's one person we can reach out to to send the message back in the community. This is it. 
Dig in. Mm -hmm. That sauce is fabulous. Oh my God. Wow. It's time to relaunch the beachfront. I've put a plan in place, and I'm really hoping Brian can finally show me that he's ready to run his business. All right, everybody, listen up. Tonight is a big service. There's not many opportunities like this. You have to take advantage of it. I need you guys all to get together right now and bring it in. One, two, three, go! Brian, Brian, let's just get real for a couple of seconds, yep. yeah? Yes, sir. You forgot the fucking most important thing tonight. Who is in for dinner tonight? You haven't even told the staff. Possibly the most important person in this town. We have the mayor in tonight, you guys. The mayor, and that's just not something that happens every fucking week. You have to bring it together tonight. You have to work as a team. Sort it out, guys. We're opening in five minutes. Come on. Checking in. Yes. All right. Welcome to the inlet. Good evening, good evening. This is lovely. Um, enjoy dinner. An amazing array of appetizers, and the entrees are to die for. Tourists in the hair, slow and steady wins the race. So first ticket on, yes? Good. Hi, how are you? Welcome Hi, to guys. Just the two of us tonight? It's the mayor. OK. Yeah. That's the mayor. Now, where are you sitting at? Come on, where? Well, they were going to have, they were going to. Well, give her a choice. We'd like to sit inside or outside. It's her choice. Welcome. How are you? Thank you for coming in. So nice to Thank see you. Thank you, guys. Likewise. Um, it's an you. absolute pleasure. I'll leave you Thank in you. hands of our manager, owner, Brian. Follow me, guys. Thank Welcome. You very much. Thank John, you. good to see you, sir. Likewise. OK, guys. All right, Mayor, wherever you'd like inside. I got a chicken burger ready at your leisure. Chicken burger? Ben, as Brian told you, the mayor's in. No, no, no he has no. not. Unreal. Brian, your chef doesn't even know the mayor's in. Ah. You don't think he deserves to know? Come yes, on. he does. Come on, man. Ben? Yeah, yeah. Yes. The mayor's in at table seven. Heard table seven. Inside. Am I good, Ben? I've got that black and chicken for you. And that's it. Ben, you need to be the captain. And right now, I'm not convinced. Let's get serious about this business and do this. Is the mayor's order in? Have they sent the appetizers yet? Yes, it is. Have they, have, yes, they, have they hit the table? No, I put their food in. He wanted the salad and the fried calamari, and she wanted the uh, mahi. Mahi, OK, great. So again, check it. That's your hot ticket tonight. But do you know what's happening in your kitchen at the moment? No, look at me. Do you know what's happening in there? Absolutely. You haven't got a fucking clue. Yeah, get into the kitchen, find out what's going on. Let's go. Behind you. Ow, that burnt my forehead. Oh, man. Excuse me. No, starving. So what did you guys order? Um, I got the mahi-mahi and a salad, and he got an appetizer. The mayor is the only person sat with nothing in front of her. Please. All right, two tunas. Can I have table 15's appetizers ASAP? It's the mayor. 15? 15. I was told seven. Fucking hell. Sorry, miscommunication. They sat on 15, right? I made a mistake. It's 15. Okay, I need two house salads right now before anything else. Right this second. Brian didn't know what table the mayor was at. It seems like the biggest thing Brian changed was his wardrobe. Two house are in the window. Two house need to go. 15. Have you seen the salads? No. Ben, yes, sir. you need to see that. You need to taste that and see everything he's doing there. Terry, that's too much dressing, bro. Redo it. Salad's overdressed, soggy as shit, wrong dressing. Ben. Yes, sir. What I need to hear is a bit of a voice. If we go silent, we'll go down. For tonight's relaunch of the beachfront. Salad's overdressed, soggy as shit, wrong dressing. I was really hoping Brian would step up as an owner, given that I put everything in place for him to succeed. God damn it, dude. But his lack of focus has me really worried that he's not fit to run this place. Come on, Brian. Come on. Ben, bye. Oh, come here. Come here, let's go. Your chef has shut down. I didn't realize it. You didn't realize. So the first two salads for the mayor had the wrong dressing on and were overdressed. I said, if you taste them, he said no. So he hasn't got your back. When's that penny going to drop that you're going to turn the corner? I we'll watch Ben. If he doesn't come out of it, we'll switch him and Joey. Will you? How many guacamoles you guys got out there? Okay. 
seconds. Give me time on the mayor's table, please, Ben. Table 15? Yeah, the mayor's table. We sold it. Calamari and uh, uh, mahi. Did you see it before it went? I sure did. I played it everything. The mayor hasn't got a fucking food. Brian, Brian, urgently, come here. So Ben's told me the fucking mayor's got their food. Right. And look at the mayor's table. There's nothing on there. Look at me. Look, look now. Hey, we're about to go down. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to get in my fucking car and I'm going to get the fuck out of here if you don't get a grip. Because this is a fucking joke. Now, you better get in there and tell your executive chef, Ben, that the mayor hasn't got their food and find out where the fuck it is. Ben, the mayor's not gotten her food. I'll put it in the window. Where, where is the I'll make it right food? now. I'll make it right now. Be nice to have some food right about Let's try the mayor's food again. Jerry, I need a Caesar now. It's coming right now, Gina. Order up. Where's that going? 51. 51. Come here, you. What is that? Undercooked. That is undercooked. Uh, young lady, come here. What does that chicken look like to you? Thank you. So it's dry. Um, young lady, how would you describe that chicken? Uh, looks kind of dry. Very dry. Very dry. Uh, you're not even a chef, are you? Mm -hmm. No. Never no. Cooked. How old are you? I'm 20. 20. Thanks, Dylan. Mm -hmm. So from a 20-year-old server that's never cooked, even she spotting it's dry. And you're saying it's raw. Let me tell you something. And listen carefully. I'm going. I'm packing my bags, because that is the worst thing we've sent all week. It's overcooked and it's dry. And then you, you tell me it's raw. Good night. I'm done. That is unreal. I mean, I'm so pissed off. I can't give that guy any more advice. I can't continue to tell him to step up and make decisions. He has a chef in there that's just riding him and riding the business. And when you're weak, you've got no chance of running a business. And what a shame. Un fucking real. Hi, coming around. I never liked to leave a business, but Brian simply wasn't listening. He missed the deadline paying his brother back, and while it's been a slow process, my advice finally started to sink in. Four months after I left, he made a decision to let Chef Ben go and hired a brand new kitchen staff. On the hotel side, Brian has made the guests a priority, given the curfew to the nighttime entertainment. Hopefully now, with Brian stepping up like a boss, he can lead the beachfront in the right direction. Tonight on Hotel Hell, I'll be investigating a murder mystery in the Idaho town of Coeur d'Alene. But the victim isn't a person. It's the Roosevelt Inn. <coughs> there are plenty of clues as I dust for fingerprints. It's like someone's ashes in an urn. And uncover horrific stains. Oh, God. Brilliant. The prime oh, suspect enough. is the owner a Sherlock Holmes wannabe who disguises himself as a chef. We must cook the fabulous food. But can't even boil an egg. That was raw. <laughs> You're a fucking joke. I'm gonna kill him. Just talk to my hand. I've got to solve the case before there's another victim, the owner's marriage. I just feel like I'm, I'm gonna suffocate. Surrounded by stunning lakes and close to two major ski resorts, 
Coeur d'Alene is one of Idaho's premier vacation destinations. It's also home to the Roosevelt Inn. The inn is a 16-bedroom converted schoolhouse owned and run by one of its former students, John Hoff. The Roosevelt Inn is the first hotel I've ever actually owned. I was up here signing the papers and I called my wife, Tina, and I say, we now own the Roosevelt Inn. And all of a sudden I hear this, because <laughs> she started crying. I did not want to buy the hotel, but John really did. I have told John many times that he won't be cold in the ground, and I'm on my way home to Kentucky. Okay, no, I'm not going to cry anymore. I'm so tired of crying. Stop, stop, stop. The Roosevelt Inn is not just hell for Tina. It's hell for the guests who have to put up with the consequences of John's eccentric behavior. Sorry, we're not trying to be a pain. It's... Yes, you are. I would say that the hotel is struggling because it's dated, it's old. It smells funny there, though. It smells old. Probably because it is old. And the food coming out of the inn's shoebox-sized kitchen is as bad as the decor. But not oh, strong fish flavor. Oblivious to the problems, John's performance never stops. I'll ask you questions, you'll give me answers. I'll ask questions, you'll give answers. I'll ask you questions, you'll give me answers. As John is more focused on playing dress up. How was that, Watson? Than on being an innkeeper. John refuses to grow old gracefully. It's Halloween for John every day. He loves to dress up. It's the curse! It's the bloody curse! Once a month at the Roosevelt, we put on a murder mystery and dinner. How's everything going in here for you? Fine. Okay. I basically do everything. Uh, you want to finish making up this bed, and I'll do the bathroom. OK, and great. Can... I feel my dad doesn't appreciate my mom. My mom works three times harder than my dad does. There are times that I'll come in, and she's out busy doing something, and he's sitting on the couch reading a book. As the business has suffered, so has John and Tina's relationship. We actually had to go through marriage counseling. I don't think John understands the sacrifice I've made. Unless I can get this place on the road to recovery, John and Tina will lose everything. If I lose the Roosevelt, I don't just lose my job, I lose my home. I become unemployed and homeless in one fell swoop. Dang it. I don't think we're going to pull out of this one. I'm here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I seriously hope this place is better than the other shitholes I've stayed in. Oh, my God. Look at that. They say all publicity is good publicity. But with a billboard that old-fashioned, I'm not so sure. You're fucking joking, aren't you? Come on. The Roosevelt Inn bed and breakfast. It's like something out of the Adams family. Roosevelt School. The place looks grim from the outside. Hello. Welcome to the Roosevelt. Good to see you. I recognize that voice. You're Gordon Ramsay. Okay, well, good to see you. <laughs> My god, look at those chairs there. Are they from the school? They are. Those came out of the first grade classroom. Well, look, you almost fit. A, a reception for dwarfs or just. <laughs> first impression from the outside, it's almost like walking into a funeral parlor. Oh. It smells like shit as well. What is that? Is that. Did the dog do a. Oh, boy, I sure hope not. Oh, Rohan. Jesus, man. Jesus. This is our dining room. Who's the chef here? I saw a billboard of a guy with the most hideous hat on, <laughs> covered in trees and, like, this six-foot yes. hat. That's me. It's kind of uh, grown into Jean-Pierre, the mad French chef of the Roosevelt. Because you're in Coeur d'Alene, is a French name town, you know, so we must cook the fabulous food and wear this outfit. <laughs> now, you'll see uh, school photos yes. down the hallway here, and these are of kids that went to school here at the Roosevelt. And the ones with the arrows pointing at the really cute, adorable little boy, that's me, of course, because I went to school here. Oh, you went to school? My here? elementary school. Who wants to live in their old school? It's like getting a detention that never ends. The guests get to hang out down here with the dogs and watch TV. You are kidding me. You can't smell those dogs? Oh, yes, I can. The dogs, actually, believe it or not, Gordon, are one of the highlights here. Now you're sounding deluded. What's next? Our little ballroom or our multi-purpose room. Oh, come on. Rohan, you're not supposed to be in this room. Don't you think this place could at least had some form of makeover? Well, sadly, Gordon, we renovated this room four years ago. This is new. Stop. No. This room looks like it was last decorated in 1908, not 2008. And how much did you spend on this? 54,000. 54,000? 54, Five, four. Yeah. Not 5,400, 54,000. I know, lovely, huh? Christ almighty. And does it generate money? No. I can't believe anyone would want to rent that space. It's hideous. 
I'm dying to have a look upstairs. It can't get any worse. It could get worse. And what's your uh, occupancy across the year? Probably around mid-20s. 20% 20 across the board. Ouch. <laughs> I am amazed you find it so funny. This is your room. OK. What's with all the pink? It's like someone threw a strawberry milkshake all over the place. My room has two levels, each as bad as the other. Oh. Everything looks like we're in a time warp. I mean, it's so dated. So, my room, how much do you pay to stay in here? Uh, $319. $319. Bloody hell. I'm speechless. 13-year-old <laughs> decor, $319 yeah. a night. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Fire away. Why do you think everything's a big joke? Because you're very critical. I'm here to get this place right. But what I don't understand is how blasé you are to the situation. I'm going to give you the truth. And if you don't like that, then I'm out of here. What do you want me to do? Get no, angry just... and punch nah. you? You want to punch me? Uh, you go well, first. Maybe I do want to punch you a little bit. But I can become physically very, very violent and have, in the past, people get hurt. Here's your keys. John. John! You can't just walk away. Where are you going? Since I checked into Idaho's Roosevelt Inn, I've been unimpressed by the horrible decor. What's with all the pink? It's like someone's vomited well, everywhere. And the dated event space that smells like wet I mean, dog. The dogs actually are one of the highlights here. But the biggest problem here <laughs> is the owner, John, who seems to think it's funny that he's in is a disgrace. The only time he stopped laughing was when I confronted him with how bad things really are here. What I don't understand is how blasé you are to the situation. Here's your keys. John! You can't just walk away. While John hides from the truth downstairs, I'm going to have a closer look at my room. It's like someone's ashes in an urn. An absolute mess. Ah, shit, no. That's what the rug's on the floor for. Just gross. Look at the dust on there. Most disgusting of all... Oh, shit. ..is the dust magnet hanging over my pillows. <laughs> that thing been up there? Hell. Let me out. I hope I'll get a sense of what's really going on here from John's wife, Tina. Gordon, this is my lovely wife. How are you? I'm stressed out. What hotel were you running before this? I was running a dental office. I worked in a dental office. I wasn't running anything Did... except my home. <laughs> so why would you go from sort of teeth to a hotel? Because he bought a hotel. <laughs> so you bought the hotel? It was my negotiation. You negotiated, you both bought it? Yes. Willingly or unwillingly? Unwillingly. I was very happy and content with the life that we had. So when John told me that we were buying the Roosevelt, I burst into tears. How much did you buy it for? 700000 700000 How much did you spend on it? We owe $1,100,000. Oh, so you haven't paid back the debt yet? No. To the bank owner, huh? Yeah, no, the bank owns us. God. We sold our house we had here. Cash in a 401k, everything we had. Oh, my word. Uh, where's your house now, what you live in? We live up in the attic. The this is my hell. I have had oh. terrible experiences here. <laughs> Business experience, financial hardship, everything's well. just falling apart here for me. <laughs> you seem serious, you seem joking. It's almost like you're playing at it. It is kind of an entertainment, though, <clears throat> to a certain degree. Uh, $1.1 million, that's an expensive entertainment. Well, yeah. I didn't realize it was this bad. How's the relationship? We were in a rough place. We went through marriage counseling, what was that, four or five years ago? Because of this business? Oh, yeah. And still working together seven days a week? Yes, 24-7, yeah. sleeping brave in the same lady. bed. I'm ready for something to change. I'm ready for anything at this point. I just feel like I'm, I'm going to suffocate. I'm going to get my uh, bag unpacked, and I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you later. Thank you. Tina looks ready to bail out, and all John can do is laugh. He thinks being over a million dollars in debt is entertainment. I think this marriage is in as much trouble as the inn. Clearly in denial, but more importantly, a man that won't man up and take responsibility. I've been told that tonight, the Roosevelt Inn is holding a murder mystery dinner. It's an event they host once a month. I have a feeling it's going to be hard to forget. 
And if you'll head on into there, I'll get you all checked in and ready to go. You look fabulous. We usually always have a lot of fun with this. We're going to continue to have fun with this. Are you dressed in that for the ceiling? I play the part of Sherlock Holmes, old man. You're playing an Englishman. I am playing an Englishman, and I even have the pipe to go with it. I've studied this accent long and hard. In fact, mine is better than your British accent. I actually don't know where Gordon got his accent. He obviously doesn't practice it very much. Mine is far more authentic than his is. Absolutely, yes. Wow. While John prances around as Sherlock Holmes, I wonder what Tina does during these events. Oh, oh my God. What Love have you sir. got on? This is crazy. What happened this is, to you? It's murder mystery night, sir. It's gone from an inn to Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> I mean, honestly. It'll be my job this evening to cook your dinner. So while John gets to play Sherlock Holmes, his wife is stuck in the kitchen. Wake up, John. This is not the 1800s anymore. John definitely liked dressing up more for the murder mysteries because he's not in the hot kitchen. He's out there hamming it up with the guests, playing Sherlock Holmes. OK. Right. Um, I'm not too sure what to make of all this. It's a little bit bizarre. It's slightly weird. I wonder if this event even makes any money. Is this profitable? It is profitable. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I mean, we made $200 tonight. $200 for all this work? And are they all staying over? Oh, no. Most of the locals, you know, when they come for a murder mystery, they usually don't do an overnight. Clearly, tonight's about feeding John's ego, not filling his bank account. Oh, well, that, that could explain it, then. No, no, oh, here now, here now. Oh, my word. Oh, I, I say. Oh, my fucking God. Hell, come to me, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it appears the game is afoot. You know, their goal with the murder mysteries has always been to get people in, but if I'm not filling the rooms, what's the point? <sighs> and I would have gone away with it, too, if it wasn't for you and your meddling guests. Yes. Oh, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Well, there you have it. Brilliant of all of you. Thank goodness that's over. It's time to find out from John what on earth he thinks he's doing. Sit down, you must be shattered. I'm tired. I bet you are. Stick a fork in me. That was mad. Was it mad? Yeah. You're in the kitchen, busting your ass off, working hard to serve all those people. And John, you were out prancing around like a sort of actor. So this is the thespian thing. It's, it's an inn, it's not a theater. But you seem to enjoy it. You have to force yourself to like doing it. I mean, it's on stage for three hours. And... The problems at the Roosevelt are elementary. Can I just have a word with you on your own? Two Certainly. Seconds. Oh, sure. This place is sinking because John refuses to take anything seriously. You love being an entertainer. Don't you dare tell me that I that is hard. It. This whole fucking thing was put together for your fantasy. Well, that's kind of what this night is. It is entertainment. We put on a show. You're pretending to be Sherlock Holmes, and upstairs, we're empty. You're in the shit financially. We're in ruins, and if you put the same amount of effort into filling this place, just one room booked tonight would have made more profit than the whole murder mystery and all that work that went into it. I mean, this is insane. And you prance around like some fucking idiot while your wife is slaving away in the kitchen. Do you have any care in the world apart from yourself? When you get a psychology degree. Oh, when I get You one. come and tell okay. me what's wrong with me. Here we go. You obviously think you're a psychologist. Big denial again. No, I'm not in denial. I just don't know what you want. It's only your own fucking stupidity to why we're in the shit this far. Well, that is probably true. So then man up and act responsible. OK, I'm done with that. Oh, I'm done with that interview. Oh. Sherlock. No, no. Does that massage your ego a bit more? You know, no, just talk to my hand, you know. I talk to my hand. Oh, yeah. what have, a have fucking a idiot. Have a You're good not night. 10 years old. You need to grow up and stop running away from the truth. <laughs> fucking joke. It was a rough first day at Idaho's Roosevelt Inn. Let me out. And last night proved to me that owner John needs to stop dressing up. Wait till I get going. And start growing up. You prance around like some fucking idiot. And take some responsibility for the problems at the inn. It's only your own fucking stupidity to why we're in the shit. I'm done with that. But John didn't want to listen. Just talk to my hand, you know. I talked to my hand. Oh, what a fucking idiot. Today, I'm going to have another go at getting through to him before he heads into the kitchen to prepare lunch. You're losing money. You're on this treadmill of mistake after mistake. 
You so may so. be in an elementary school, but you're not a child. And I would really wish if you stopped acting like one quickly. Is that possible? Sure. Show me what you got. You get that? I don't want to cook for Gordon. I mean, first of all, he's got a huge ego of his own, so, you know, nothing anybody else does is going to be any good. I don't even want to cook him a thing. How are we doing over here? Word has spread that I'm in town and the dining room is full. We're all having the same five course set menu cooked in the inn's tiny kitchen. There's a shrimp cocktail to start you off. I can Thank you. Yeah. That's gnarly. That's ghastly. Wow. What the watery bits? What's that bit there? Um, that's probably the tomato juice. Unless it's condensation from the shrimp. Condensation? Was it frozen? Yes. Oh, shit. Man, yeah, warm. That's a sad looking shrimp. That's not a good start. It doesn't really taste fresh. Okay. I will take that for you. And everyone else seems to be hating it too. How can you fuck up a shrimp cocktail? Okay, here's Gordon's. Pecan crusted salmon. Is it fresh salmon? Frozen. Frozen. That has to be the saddest looking plate of salmon anywhere in North America tonight. The seasoning is dreadful. It's very dry. And... Would you like me to take it for you? Yes, please. I'm sorry. I'll take care of you. Tastes great to me. Well, I'm going to kill him. I just want Gordon to take a long walk off a short pier. I want him to fall into a very deep pit so he can't get out. This is pathetic. Can John cook anything? Can he cook an egg? He can cook an egg. Could you ask him just to boil me an egg? Sure thing. Soft-boiled egg. He can't possibly mess up a soft-boiled egg, can he? Soft-boiled egg for Gordon. OK, what? Soft-boiled egg. What? I'm just, like, going. Wow. No egg cup. No. I'll make my own egg cup. Okay, now it's bows. That was raw. <laughs> Is this really happening? He can't even boil a fucking egg. <laughs> fucking thing's still got feathers on it. <laughs> Could have probably cooked that another two minutes. I am absolutely ready to boot Gordon Ramsay out of my end. Fire away, buddy. Are you having a laugh at your family's expense? No. Big tall hat, big jacket, and you can't boil a fucking egg. You want a fried egg? You want French toast, too? How about some pancakes? What the fuck are you doing? You don't care, do you? I do care. You're a fucking joke. Those are what we refer to as fighting words. Gutsy thing to do. Especially in a kitchen full of sharp knives. It has never been a joke for me. Ever. Come play at my school. I'm the headmaster. You're acting like an absolute idiot. No, but you're no. in my house. That's right. I'm disgusted at your performance. Your big problem is you can't handle the truth. You don't like hearing it. You don't even know me. You know It's a joke. Think about your wife. You're in to $1.1 million of debt. You're forcing her to live in hell. She's telling me that. I just think, over the last 13 years, of what you've fucking done, and not to you, to everybody else standing behind you. I'm tired of hearing that. I don't need it anymore. Screw it. I really don't care if he leaves. Fuck, man. I had a horrible night's sleep on the couch because I couldn't sleep in my bed. I really need a hot shower. Oh, shit. Fucking hell, this water's freezing. I need to open John's eyes, but he walks out every time things get difficult, so I've got another plan. Have you got two minutes? We do. There's something I'd like to uh, show you, uh, both in my, uh, my room. Oh, crap. What now? What's wrong now? Please, come through. Oh. There's the jury, and they're going to hang us. Clearly, you recognize some of your guests from the past six months. We do. I think feedback is critical. First impressions walking through the door. A lot of decoration. It's kind of outdated. Outdated, yeah. Too much. A lot Too much. going on at once. I'd like to go on to the food. Um, the general consensus? Disappointing. How was it? It was. It, was too, it wasn't the value that we paid, honestly. Show of hands, how many of you 
would return and stay here again, please. None of our guests would return. I'm kind of speechless. I, I'm, I, uh, I didn't expect this. I thought it was. I thought we were better than that. That's the most valuable information you've had in 13 years. I thought we were a lot better than this, and that, that is uh, a view that is changing. You've got to put yourself in the guest position. You know, you've given me feedback on everything you've seen and experienced, but there's something I'd like to point out that none of you have seen. Please. Would you be so kind to put a pair of these on, please? Oh, my gosh. Can this just get... Any more terrible? I don't think so. Glasses on. Okay. This black light is going to show up any bodily fluids. Let's start with the uh, the pillows, shall we? Get there. Oh my God! Like someone urinated on it. Absolutely disgusting. If you think that's bad. This kind of stuff hasn't been weeks. That's that's years. Oh. oh my. Absolutely hideous. Horrified. Disgusted. Grossed out. Kind of want to go vomit. But you kind of trust that things are going to be. You have the right to and expect that. And you you have the. This is just as bad as it can possibly be. I mean, I'm disgusted. I. <sighs> How does that make you feel? It Dirty. makes me actually feel sick to my stomach. Then I slept Glad I took a shower, but now I'm wondering about the shower. I'll let you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. This is me. I mean, I've put my heart and soul into this. <laughs> it's just so embarrassing. I had to do this because you won't listen to me, and John just laughs at every problem. I understand. I understand now. I'm worried about Tina. Hearing from the guests and seeing those stains seem to hit her pretty hard. Tina? Yes. Have you got two sets? I'm not here to hurt you, I'm here to help you. I'm just banging my head against the wall with John. Well, I know what we do is not perfect, but I thought what we did was better than that. John's got to get out of this bubble. He's an innkeeper. But he's constantly joking and shrugging responsibility. And now he has to start looking at himself. The thing that probably bothers me the most is John just refuses to understand my need to have my part of the dream. I don't like living and eating and breathing my work 24-7 and never, ever having a place to go that I can get away. But you're not happy? No. I'm not. <clears throat> At the end of the day, I usually lay down in the bed, and I know this isn't what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I'd leave here tomorrow if I could leave here tomorrow. I'm ready to just walk away from this and just forget it. I want to leave. I want to get out of here and go away. You can't give up. 13 years of being unhappy is not a molehill, it's a mountain. You have a voice. You've got to stand up. You absolutely have the right to be happy. I mean that. I guess maybe I needed somebody to say, you have a right to be happy. That was good. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll see you later. Okay. I promise you I'll make a difference. And I mean that. Last night, John's wife Tina was at a breaking point. But you're not happy? No. And I'd leave here tomorrow if I could leave here tomorrow. After talking, I realized how bad things really are here. And I promise to make things better because Tina truly deserves to be happy. Good morning, darling. Good morning. How are you? I'm, I'm here. You're here. <laughs> um, let's catch up, shall we? Let's get out okay. of this little cubby hole. OK. Um, maybe downstairs. I can't believe that John and Tina have spent $60,000 on a ballroom that they never use and smells like dog. Looking at this inn, there's a, a huge missed opportunity. The potential of this room is extraordinary. And this has to be used as a way to get people into the bedrooms upstairs and make money. Exactly. How often do you use this room? 
twice a month. Four nights, that's crazy. It is. Have you ever thought about employing a wedding planner to actually book this place out? I have one that I'm working with. I've been working with her for just about a year now. I don't pay her a salary. Right. It's her wedding. If we score a wedding, we both get paid. So yeah. she's motivated to sell it. For me, it's a big missed opportunity. Yeah, you know, once you've held an amazing wedding and you've got such great feedback, it just spreads. Okay, this is what I want to see. Um, I'll see you later. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. This does not stack up. I'm going to go meet the wedding planner because there must be something that John and Tina aren't telling me. Hello, Hi. how are you? Nice to meet you. Likewise, where should we start? Oh, well, you want to come on over and we'll have a seat? And... Shall we? Uh, yes, Thank come you. on over. The Roosevelt. Um, what would you say the key problems are? It's dated. It's, um, it's hard to sell 10-day-old bread. Right. It's, you know, brides are young, they're sophisticated, they're on their phones, they're seeing what the rest of the world is doing. You know, a big thing with selling the ballroom is the colors. That only matches a tiny percentage. You can either go burgundy, ivory, or navy blue, and those colors are so dated anyway. Dark. It's terrible. And then you walk downstairs, and the smell. I had one girl literally say, I've got to go upstairs, the smell is going to make me sick. John doesn't strike me as someone that I'd want to put my wedding in his hands. As a host, how is he? We have had some issues um, last summer with him coming out and dancing. At the guest wedding? Yes. Like ballroom dancing or? It was more like Macarena type line dancing style. Oh my god. I mean, how awkward was that? It was mortifying. Oh my god. If you just bear with me whilst I make some changes. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, you are the key to their success going forward. Would you give them one more chance? Okay, I'm in. Thank you. Good well, to see you too. Good to see Thank you. you. Thank you, darling. Now that Misty is on board to help the Roosevelt, I'm going to make one last attempt to see if John is ready to change. How are you feeling? I'm not here to hurt your feelings, John, but you have a huge defense mechanism. I have an attitude. I want to help, but you are a very tough, stubborn, selfish individual to get through to. Yeah, truth hurts. It's not a sign of weakness to put your hand up and ask for help. And I don't want to butt heads. I don't want to butt heads either. Gordon, I've got two options here. I can close up the business, walk away from it, give it to the bank. The other option is, I know I've done this to myself. I've done this to my wife. Uh, I've got to find a way to get out of it. This has been your dream, your ambition, and she just followed suit. You're correct. You have one amazing, loyal lady there. I don't deserve her. I'm a pig sometimes, there's just no doubt about it. Yeah. I'm trying to change that. She's not the one that should be suffering because of what I did. And I haven't even considered that in years. Let's start making this place better. I need you committed. I want the help. I want to make this work. Coming up, has John's change come too late? I've, I've quit dreaming. Now that John's finally turned the corner... I'm a pig sometimes, trying to change that. It's time to sit down with Tina and get to the heart of their relationship. I'm so pleased that we've got to a place that we can start making steps in the right direction. But this is a family run in, and you need your time out, and you need to cut your dear lady slack. You need to learn the importance of being a happy couple. What have you got to say? Yeah. We've been so wrapped up in this and everything we do that don't even know where to where to go with romance anymore. It's like, I'm so self-consumed with all of this. Just the ability to just have a conversation with you, understanding my, my feelings. I have wishes and ambitions. There are things that are important to me, that are vitally important to me. You have to support that. If you're not prepared to support each other in each other's roles, then it's never, ever going to work. You need to be happy together. 
I want to know what your dreams are again. I haven't heard a dream from you in years. I don't even know what your dreams are anymore. I don't know what my dreams are anymore. <laughs> I've, I've quit dreaming. I want you to start dreaming again. Mm. And then I want you to share those dreams with me. Because I love you. I know you do. I told all my girls they were princesses. And you are too. I haven't treated you much like royalty. I do feel that Gordon has helped John appreciate me more and see what's going on inside of here should matter to him. Now that they're talking again, I want to give Tina and John a lesson in something else they've not done well for a long time. Wow. Cooking. In any inn, country, hotel, it's all about comfort. And what I learn immediately from you is that you're trying way too hard. You've got a shoebox of a kitchen that you can't swing a cat in. You shouldn't be cooking five course meals in there. OK. You're not a chef. No, I'm not. You shouldn't be on a billboard. I shouldn't be. A delicious home-cooked meal. That's all I'd expect to see. That's all I'd expect to smell when you come through that door. So I've put together a list of dishes for the whole week, something that you can cook in one pot. Fabulous. Let it cook itself. <laughs> really fabulous. Okay. These are my recipes. Uh, I'm proud of them. Don't start improvising, change. Just follow them. They will work. Half an hour to get the chilli on. Yeah. Fabulous. Sweet. Nobody comes here, John and Tina, expecting a five-course meal. The food was an amazing discovery that it could be so simple, so easy, so delicious. I'm glad that Gordon is in my kitchen. Tomorrow is a new dawn for the Roosevelt. And my goodness, are we going to turn the page. My team worked all night to bring the hotel into the 21st century. Now it's time to reveal the new Roosevelt Inn. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning Gordon. You've got a spring in your step, John. How are you feeling? Wonderful. Good. Let's go. Okay. Come in, come in, come in, please. OK. 16 rooms, 32 guests. This hotel should be full. Oh, Welcome what? to your new honeymoon suite. Oh, wow. Oh, Holy oh, my wow. Oh. John, how do you feel? <laughs> oh, this is incredible, Gordon. A uh, honeymoon suite, <laughs> decluttered, bright, elegant. Oh. We were literally two centuries back in time with what we were doing in these rooms, and we are suddenly into now, today. It's amazing. Oh. John and Tina, I'd like you both to go upstairs. Oh, very pretty. This is just a room that will be great for room service, to have a bit of romance. Oh, this is just truly beautiful. Now, coupled with selling those rooms, the big asset that was underused in many ways was downstairs. Truly, that's been a huge disappointment for me. Come with me now, and let yes. me show you the new, stunning Roosevelt <laughs> wedding space. Oh my God. I thought we had something that would be viable to help build our business, and it wasn't. It was dragging it down. <gasps> oh, good grief. Oh, holy oh, cow. Look at this. Whoa. OK, this is stunning. This is amazing. Wow. Um, Absolutely oh amazing. Goodness. I love okay. the color scheme. This is stunning. Oh, my gosh. Yes. This is the direction we need to be going in. This is the next step up, and I am extremely grateful. And I don't want to see a dog. A dog's hair, a dog's chew, anywhere in this space. Understood. Now, this room should propel this business to greater heights. It has to be your biggest marketing tool. Because when you've got the wedding booked, the guests should book every room upstairs. This space and the revenue it can bring into the Roosevelt could definitely be the game changer that we've been looking for. I'd like to um, point your attention to those wonderful plates and all the glassware on the tables. That's a special gift to you worth 50000 <gasps> no way! Really? <laughs> You've now got, you know, a solid foundation to host the most amazing wedding. Beautiful, beautiful. Man. Now, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Oh my God. Okay. Please. Oh, this amazing. is just... Cool. You may recognize this lady. <laughs> oh, yes! Yes, lady! <laughs> Look at our new space! I hope Misty's going to give us a second chance. What strikes you now walking through that room? What's the first thing that hits you? It's just, it's natural, it's, it's modern, it's what the brides are looking for. They're sophisticated, they're young. This is what they want. And does it show sort of versatility in a way that it can be adapted to suit different colors? Absolutely. We can put any color in this room and it'll be wonderful. Yay! This is gonna sell mm -hmm. itself. How does it smell? It smells wonderful! <laughs>
<laughs> now, here's the good news. She is prepared to give you one more chance to become Coeur d'Alene's number one venue for hosting weddings. One more surprise, John and Tina. Missy's not just here to visit the Roosevelt. Is hosting a wedding tonight. Tonight? Owners of the Roosevelt Inn, John and Tina, have come a long way from when I first met them. Personally. Because I love you. And professionally. I want to make this work. And I've just surprised them with a true test for their business. The Roosevelt is hosting a wedding tonight. Wow. Tonight? When Gordon said we had a wedding tonight, instant gut-clenching terror. You're going to be cooking, serving, just simple, elegant food. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, good luck. Take you ladies up to the room. All right, go on in, ladies. Ooh, I like that bed. <laughs> oh, my dress. Guests are just starting to arrive. Hi. I gave John and Tina a couple of simple but delicious wedding recipes that they could cook in their tiny kitchen, and that I knew the guests would love. This evening is going to be huge for us. You're feeling that that really wound up sense inside yourself, and it's like, holy cow. Donald, Nicole. As the couple exchange their vows downstairs, upstairs in the kitchen, John and Tina are proving they are there for each other when it matters. I give you all that I am. I give you all that I am. And you may kiss your bride. You're that side, I'm this side, and we go bang. And then we go bang. And then, so now we... Plates and hands, guys, yep. and downstairs, now, so... plates and hands, serve it up. OK, ladies, let's go. Grab them and go, grab them and go. For the first time ever, the food at the Roosevelt is putting a smile on people's faces. Try and bunch them up a little bit. It just makes it look so much neater. Including Tina's. Breathe and talk and, OK, I've got this. Awesome. We're in a nice rotation here. John and Tina are a great team when they communicate properly. OK, good. And I think the buzz they get from tonight will encourage them to keep working on their relationship. How you doing? We're rocking along here. I love it. Plates are going away, this Steven. Is the this is the best thing I've ever had. Well done. OK. How do you feel? <laughs> Where's John? It. Well done. Oh, thank you. First time you've actually cooked. Yes. Yeah? From yes. scratch. From scratch. For an amazing wedding. Well done, both of you. Thank you. It's been a great night thanks to John and Tina's teamwork. You guys did it, even ahead of schedule. <laughs> You can do this. I'm really hoping that our future with Misty and, and our wedding business just goes through the roof. Time to go. I'm going to be a bit sad to leave this place. I think John and Tina have done a bloody good job tonight. And more importantly, I think the whole wedding has opened their eyes to the huge potential they've got here. Tonight, the Roosevelt is fully booked for the first time in years, and the inn is back on course for success. It's been a hell of a week. Yeah. Yes. Uh, tonight proved that you both can pull this off. Once we got the system going, I, it, it went very well. Stick together. All right, we'll do it, like Lou. You've got every chance now. Good luck. You can have a happy, happy ever after, let me tell you. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Thank you Do again. not sneak downstairs to that dance floor. <laughs> not even heading yes. in that direction. Night, night. Bye. Thank you, Gordon Ramsay, for giving us this opportunity. This experience, obviously, is not meant to be easy, but in the end, worth it. So thank you very much. It was nice to say goodbye to him tonight. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing him again, actually.